So far in our course, we've been working with equations. In this video and this section, we're going to uh, concentrate on inequalities instead and see how they are both similar and different than equations that we've been working with. Keep in mind, as if you are working with an equation, its defining characteristic is going to be an equal sign. When we're working with inequalities, we actually have several different types of options of things that we can see. You might see symbols like this that mean greater than. Um, or you could see a symbol that's a greater than with a line under it, which means greater than or equal to. And then we can also similarly have a less than and then a less than or equal to. When we're looking at different uh, solution sets, when we were working with equations with one variable, so for example, if you wanted to solve something like 3x plus 2 equals 5, the solution set of this equation was going to be one value, and we could find one value of x, for example, that worked. But when we're looking for a solution set for an inequality, the truth is, is that we get a whole family of values that will work to make our statement true. So let's say, for example, we're looking at the solution set of x is less than 3. Well, any number that's less than 3 is going to work. So if we kind of go through our different options here, x equals 0, that's smaller than 3. x equals negative 1, also smaller than 3. In fact, all the negative numbers are smaller than 3, so that works. Um, not every solution, of course, works. x equals 3 does not work in this case because we're looking for numbers that are strictly less than 3. There's no line underneath it, so 3 is not less than 3. 5 is also not less than 3. Sometimes we get numbers in certain forms that are a little bit more difficult to ascertain whether they belong in the solution set. If you have a number in a form that is not helpful for you to decide, then change it to a form that is. For example, if I look at the fraction 5 thirds, it's a little... I, I may not be able to think right away, well, is that less than 3 or not? But if I can change the 5 thirds into a decimal form, then I can think about comparing the decimal values much simpler. So, for example, if I do 5 divided by 3, I get 1.67, and now I can see that that number definitely is less than 3 and include that in a description of my solution set. Um, for the next example here, if we're looking at the solution set of the values of x greater than or equal to negative 1, this time, because it has the line under the, the greater than symbol right here, then that means that we will need to go ahead and include any, um, we can actually include the value negative 1 as a solution, as well as things that are bigger than it. Um, in this case, 0 is bigger than negative 1. Negative 1 is equal to negative 1, but that would work in this equation, right? Because we'd have negative 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1, and because of that equal to qualification, that will be in the set. Negative 5, however, is less than negative 1, right? If you owe 1 or you owe 5, owing 5 is a, a more debt. Uh, x equals 3 is bigger than negative 1, and in fact, all positive numbers would be bigger than negative 1 when we go and we look at what the values that are going to be associated with that. Now, one thing that is often a nice way to go about looking at different pieces of information is to uh, show solution sets as graphs on a number line. Um, if we kind of scroll down a little bit farther here, notice that we have a solution set of x less than 3 and a solution set of x greater than negative greater than or equal to negative 1. And it's nice to be able to sketch a graph of what those types of values will look like. When we're just dealing with one variable, we just have one dimension, so we're going to use a number line to denote that. For example, here we can put in values like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and their negative counterparts down this way. If we're looking for the values in the solution set of x less than 3, we want all the values that are to the left of 3 on the number line because things that are to the left of the number line are smaller than things to the right of the number line. Now we want everything up to 3 but not including 3. So the way that we can denote that in our common notation for mathematics here is we use an open circle on the number line. What this means is you want everything up to that value but not including that value. So this graph would mean that something like 2.999 would be included but not the actual value of 3. It's really nice when you're looking and graphing 
the solution sets that your variable is on the left side of the inequality. That way, the, the direction of the inequality kind of points in the direction that should be shaded on the graph. And so your graphs of inequalities, rather than just being points or numbers, now are entire sections of graph that are shaded. If we're looking for the solution set of x greater than or equal to negative 1, again, we can recreate our number line here. We'll just go ahead and have our same values here. We want everything greater than this time or equal to negative 1. And so because we are looking at negative 1 as kind of our, our edge value, so we really want to emphasize that and we use that by making a circle because we do want to include negative 1 as a possible value. We're going to go ahead and highlight that. And then we want everything greater than negative 1. And so we want all the values that are showing up to the right of our number line when we go to put it in our in our set. So this is an example of how we can do a graph. So our conventions for doing your inequalities on number lines, first of all, you want to make sure that your um, variable is on the left. So you can shade the appropriate direction. Um, and then we are going to use open circles if it's just an edge value, but not equal to. And then we use a filled circle for that edge value or boundary value that is equal to. And then you want to make sure that you shade the appropriate side of the graph. Appropriate solutions. And so we can do that in order to sketch graphs of different types of values. Now, uh, another way that we often see inequality solutions written besides a graph is something called interval notation. And interval notation is kind of a shortcut way that we can write about different values. When we use inter interval notation, it kind of looks like an ordered pair, which is a little bit confusing. So you do need to pay attention to the context of when interval notation is being used. As we write something in interval notation, we're going to have two values separated by a comma. The value on the left is going to be the smallest possible value that is, would be a part of your answer set. The value on the right is going to be the largest possible value that would be in your answer set. And then we're either going to use parentheses or we're going to use brackets. We use parentheses in cases where we want to get up to but not equal to that value. And we use square brackets like this one. if we want to um, include that value. So these are kind of our conventions for how we work with and write interval notation. All right, so if these are our values, the only other thing that we want to talk about, if we're looking at our graphs, for example, in this first problem here, notice that, the vi that um, with x less than 3, we can get as negative of a value as we want. So if we're looking for a smallest value in this particular case, well, we can go all the way negative, you know, 9 billion, negative 9 trillion, um, as far down as we want to go down that line. So if we're looking at the biggest or smallest value, if they go all the way to the edge of the graph, we want to use the infinity symbol when we're using interval notation. Um, and if our smallest value goes all the way to the edge of the graph, then we're going to use negative infinity to denote that we're on the far left side of the graph. So if we're going to go ahead and write our values in interval notation here, for the set x less than 3, I like to look at the graph. The very most left smallest possible value is going to be negative infinity. And you can never reach infinity. So we always are going to use parentheses when we're dealing with infinity. That's our smallest possible value. Then we're going to do a comma. Then our biggest possible value is going to be 3. But we don't actually want to include 3. We want everything up to 3, 2.99999, but not actually 3. So we use a parentheses value. So this interval notation says that I want all of the values, all possible values or solutions for x are going to lie between negative infinity and 3, not equal to either of those end boundary values. For the set x equals 
or x greater than or equal to negative 1. My smallest possible value is negative 1, and I do want to include negative 1 as a possible solution, so I'm going to use a square bracket. Then I do a comma, and then I want the biggest possible value. In this case, my shading goes all the way to the far right-hand side of the graph, so I'm going to use a positive infinity as the far right side, and because I can never reach infinity, I always use a parentheses bracket for that. And that would be my value in interval notation. Um, it's often nice when I'm going to write things in interval notation to actually look at the graph. That makes it a little bit easier to see what's the thing farthest on the left for the smallest value, what's the thing farthest on the right for the largest value, and you can kind of read that graph from left to right. Okay, so let's take a look then at a couple of different pieces here that I have written in interval notation already, and let's think about what a graph of these values would look like. In this particular problem, notice, so let's go ahead and draw in our draw in a number line set here. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here what we have is we have everything starting at negative 2. So we're going to have an open, uh, we're going to have a circle at negative 2. This is our boundary edge value and we want everything from negative 2 shaded up all the way to infinity. So in this case we're going to shade all the way to the right and then be sure to shade the arrows to indicate that we're going to continue to include values all the way to the end of the number line. As we look at our, our uh, parentheses or brackets, the parentheses on the left says that negative 2 should, be in, should be, not be included as a value. We want everything from negative 2 on but not actually negative 2. So we're going to have an open circle here in our, in our notes. In the next example where it says in the interval between negative 1 and 5, if we sketch our, our uh, number line here, this time we want everything, uh, the smallest possible value is negative 1, and it's got a parenthesis, so it's going to be an open circle. Then the biggest possible value in this case is going to be 5. And we want to include that because notice it has a bracket. So we're going to have this value here, and it's going to be a filled in circle. And then we're going to shade in everything that's bigger than negative 1, but smaller than or equal to 5. And this time what we get is, note, the side arrows of our graph aren't shaded in, but we have kind of a segment that, of the graph that actually anything in that in that particular section or value would be included as a possibility in my graph. Now, if we come back up here, let's see if we can do this. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so if we come back up here, notice we have uh, determine if given values are in the solution set. If we're looking in the interval between negative 2 and infinity, so we're looking at this uh, first graph here, notice anything in the shaded area is going to be picked up as a possible solution. So for example, 0 is between negative 2 and infinity. Right, and it's part of my shaded section, so it would be a solution set, or it would be in my solution set. x equals negative 1, that's in the shaded area, so that's also going to be included. x equals negative 5, well, negative 5 is off to the left, and the left side is not shaded in my graph here, so we're not going to include that. Um, x equals 3 is in the shaded area. x equals 5 is in the shaded area. And again, x equals 5 thirds is between 1 and 2, because it's 1.67 or 1.6 repeating, but it's going to be in that spot there, which is also shaded in terms of my interval. For uh, the values between negative 1 and 5, uh, 0 is in the shaded region. Negative 1 is an open circle, so that is not in my shaded region. Um, so it is not part of my solution. Um, and again, that's because of that parentheses there. Negative 5, also not in the solution. It's off to the left in the non-shaded region x equals 3 is between negative 1 and 5. x equals 5 is between negative 1 and 5, and because 5 is that boundary value, but it has that uh, bracket in the interval notation, it's that filled in circle, so it does in fact get included. And uh, values between 1 and 2 are all included in my solution, so so would 5 thirds. Um, sometimes, as we're looking at intervals like this, sometimes we're going to see these types of things written in inequality form as well. Um, if we have something like x is less than 3, we are going to include all the way to the edges of the graph. But here we want values that are between negative 5 and 3. As we go in and look at these values, 
Uh, notice negative 5 is less than x, and then x is less than or equal to 3. So we want everything in between there. So if we fill in our number line here, and again, we'll make sure to have negative 5 on there because that's one of the numbers that we have. Here we want everything between negative 5, but not including negative 5, right, because it doesn't have an equal to, so we have an open circle. On the upper limit, we want everything including 3. So we're going to fill that circle value in here, and then we want to include in our solution any values that are in between there. So that's going to shade the center section in here. So we can write chains of inequalities like this. It means something like this. And then we could actually write those values in interval notation. And looking at the graph from left to right, our smallest possible value is negative 5. Our biggest possible value is 3. We do not want to include negative 5. But we do want to include 3 because we want x less than or equal to 3. So we use a parenthesis on one side and then the square bracket on the other side to show that we want to include that value. Coming up to the top here, we can then look at our graph picture to decide. Um, and you should be able to see that 0 would be in this set. Negative 1 is in the shaded region. Negative 5 is an open circle because we needed x to be bigger than negative 5. So that is not in our set this time either. Um, 3 is included in our set because that's a filled in circle there. 5 is not included in our set because it's farther to the right and our uh, shaded region has ended. 5 thirds again is between 1 and 2. That does get picked up here in that shaded region of my inequality and I have those particular sets here. Um, so those, that's kind of the basics of how things are. As you're doing different problems on your solutions, you are I, um, the instructions are going to ask you to write your solutions in different forms, um, in inequality form. So you'd be looking at a value like this where you have your, um, where you're using one of the inequality symbols. It's going to ask you to draw a graph, which will look like a shaded number line portion, so like these. And it will also ask you to report your answers in interval notation, which again is the smallest possible, the largest possible, and then use a combination of parentheses or brackets if you need to include what those end values are. Um, just by way of comparison here, if we're looking at the interval from negative 2 to infinity, if we wanted to write that in um, just inequality, general inequality form, we have x, we want everything that's to the right or bigger than negative 2. Because it's an open circle, we call this a strict inequality. We want x to be greater than negative 2 but not equal to it, so we would write it just like this. Um, in the next example here where we have values between negative 1 and 5, what we're going to want to do is have negative 1 and 5 with x sandwiched in between. We want uh, everything not including negative 1, so we want values of x that are bigger than negative 1, so we're going to write this as negative 1 less than x, and then we want everything up to and including 5, so we write less than or equal to 5. When we do our chain values, like if we want um, values to be in between here, we always use the less than symbols as we go from the, um, as we're sandwiched in here. And the reason is because we're reading that graph from left to right. So negative 1 is less than the shaded values of x, which are less than or equal to 5, which is the upper limit on the, on the value. So if you want to write kind of these compound, we call them compound inequalities, um, use the less than symbols or less than or equal to symbols, depending on if you're including those endpoints or not. All right, so in the next couple of sections, we'll look at what does it look like if the variable's not already by itself, and how can we solve, actually solve inequalities.